The egg drop here at Sigmore is a, a challenge that we set forth in physics class, and it is a culmination of several things. As we start from the beginning with just straight motion, and then we're moving on to force and acceleration, and so we have to figure out um, how to protect the egg. On the surface, it seems pretty basic. You need to protect the egg from the fall, but when you get into the details, it takes a lot of engineering know-how to meet the parameters that I set forth every year. And it's not like they can use their older brother's or sister's design because I change the parameters every year. So physics itself is a foundational science. Um, and so you do start at the beginning where something has changed position so you call it motion. But you can't really call it motion unless you give it a frame of reference. And then you determine, well, what's the rate of that motion? And so that gives you speed, but then if you add a direction, it gives you velocity. And if you have a change of the velocity, it gives you acceleration. And so bit by bit, you add on and add on and add on. So we're not done with physics yet. We're continuing to add on, but it's not like they could have done the egg drop device at the beginning. And so we're kind of right here towards the middle where they know enough to realize, oh, I need to account for uh, the deceleration of the egg. I need to account for the mass of the egg. I need to account for the various forces involved. Uh, some of them were clever enough to put more mass on one side of their device so that it always fall in a certain direction. Um, others were clever and actually suspended the egg so that it would never actually touch the side of the device itself and the device would uh, absorb the energy of the impact. Some of them really get into it and uh, will engineer a device, test it, fails, retest it, fails, retest it, fails, and then they finally get it, it, it succeeding and they understand why and they get one shot that it succeeds. We do have a few tears when those kids who put so much energy into it, they come in and they drop it from two meters, then all of a sudden the egg did not survive. It's a fragile thing, an egg. They have to take something that's theoretical and make it practical. They have to take something that is fragile like an egg and protect it somehow. So they were only given so much volume, so much mass that they could work with and still succeed. We'll find out though, right? And success. For a lot of these kids, it's really eye-opening to for them to realize that, hey, this is something I can do. Uh, some of these kids come in here, they can't, don't even know how to light a match, right? And then we, we take them all through chemistry. Mm -hmm. Some of these kids come in here and they don't know how to use a screwdriver. And then we take them through physics. And so it's, it's one thing to think about it, it's one thing to talk about it, it's another thing to calculate it, and then it's a whole other thing to do it. Why do we do this? Um, physics is not something that everyone does, but physics is something that everyone experiences, whether or not they understand what they're experiencing. And so to be able to say, oh, I understand what's going on here. You watch the weather and the weathermen talk about things. You're like, oh, I understand why this system is moving from here to there. Or even as simple as, oh, I understand why when I use this mug rather than that mug with my coffee, why did it get colder sooner? Um, so there's a lot of whys that are answered just by physics. And for them to really think through these things and then extrapolate to the next thing, that's why. <laughs>